Al here. You know what? Um, I'm going to do kind of a tech review uh, type of a how to record yourself type of a video today. I've had a question from one of my patrons over at Patreon and he's like, how do I record myself? Here, let me plug this in. There we go. That's better. Today I'm going to do sort of a tech review how to record yourself kind of a, a video. Not a really in-depth tech review, but just kind of give you an overview of what I do. I've got a Roland R26 here. Let's, uh, let me put my mic on here because I'm using a lapel mic. Just a cheap one. I found it online. It was kind of amazing. The deal that I found. Uh, what I mean by that is I found six of them for like two dollars and seventy-five cents or something like that, and I thought hey, I'm just going to try those out. You know, for two fifty, three bucks, really I can't go wrong on this. Uh, so I I bought like six microphones, these little lapel microphones, and they've been great. They sound great. I've been using them for quite a while. I plugged them into my R26. That's what it's doing right there. It's going into the input. This is a six channel recorder if I want it to be. I'm going to get close here so you can see what's going on with this. All right, that's the R26. That's what it looks like. And I'm actually recording. You can see the, the meters bouncing right there. And uh, I've got these two microphones on and I've got, uh, I'm using four channels right now. And so I've got two channels on the mic two channels on the mics up here and the guitar that you heard at the beginning was my electric guitar and I was going through my crate amp and I just put it on the stool here you saw that right so I just recorded it through that I like that the sound of that amplifier I'm going to do a video with that amp playing the lead to while my guitar no knocking on heaven's door and uh, so anyway, I got the R26. There are other recorders out there, like Zoom makes a couple different recorders, but the reason I got this one is because I wanted it to be a professional recorder. And let me show you what I'm talking about. I can actually plug in a quarter inch jack into the bottom of this recorder right here. So what I do is I just plug it in. I've got two inputs, one for right or left side. I can do mono or stereo. Okay, and then I can also use an XLR input like that, right? This is for, this is a microphone cord. Sometimes guitars have XLR inputs too. Basically you just plug it in right here, right? And then I can do the XLR inputs there. I've got volume controls so I can turn my volumes up or down the way I want them. It's got a pause button. It's got a, an LED screen, a touch screen right here that I can uh, do different things. I can see the info. Anyway, it's a professional recorder. I like it a lot. It's never let me down. The batteries run about 10 hours. I just run it on batteries for AA batteries. Um, it takes an SD card right here. I plug it into my computer to download it into the computer. Um, I can put an adapter on here and run it from an adapter if I wanted to, but usually I want to move around with it. It's also got a headphone jack right there, and I can plug in my uh, headphones either from my iPhone, or I can use over-the-ear headphones and listen to what I've done. Uh, so it's just a great little recorder. Now, if you're just wanting to record something on your iPhone, there's a voice recorder that you can record. Like if you just have an idea and you just want to record, well, that's one way to do it. If you want to buy programs that actually, uh, you know, like multi-track programs, you can do that. Um, there are many people who talk about different ways to record. Just do a search on the internet. I started recording back in the day with magnetic tape 
and I still have a couple of recorders. I have a quarter inch four track Tascam, is it a Tascam? And then I have a TAC eight track half inch. I think it's a TAC. You know, I'd have to go look. <laughs> I don't remember. Anyway, um, I love tape because it sounds really good. Even though there's a little bit of a hiss in the background, really when you start to listen to music on it, when you record music on it, that hiss just goes away. You don't really hear it. Um, CDs are nice because they're completely, there's no hiss in them, but you get used to the little bit of hiss that's in that, but the dynamic range of tape is just amazing. It records a little bit differently than, than digital. You have to learn how to work with it. Anyway, I like to record sometimes with the mics, the two mics on here. Actually, there's four mics. There's two mics here, and then there's two mics here in a configuration like this, so you can do really nice stereo effects. So, uh, you know, if you want to record yourself, you've got a lot of different options. Let's talk about what you need to do. You make sure, make sure that when you record something, that you record it in um, a high quality. For instance, when I use this recorder right here, I record it in a WAV format, a WAV format, not an MP3 format. When I make an MP3, it's a 300 and 20 kbps mp3. I don't go for 192 or anything lower than that um, because it just doesn't sound as good. So you want to get all the information you possibly can. So when you're making, uh, when you're recording, get the best mic you can get for the money that you can spend and record at a high bit rate so that it sounds very good. Just like when you're recording video, you want to do it at a really decent uh, bitrate or whatever they call it. You know, 4K is very, very popular right now because it looks really good. This isn't 4K, but it's not bad. You want to make sure that you use and get started with whatever you have, whatever equipment that you have. And if you want to know more about that, go watch something like Casey Neistat's School of Filmmaking or something. I'll put um, a link in the description so you can access that. He has some good thoughts on just starting with whatever you have and just going for it. Same thing with audio recording. Just start with whatever you have and then build from there. That's all I have to say about that. You know, I use new strings a lot when I'm going to record or when I'm going to do a gig and I hear my strings are not playing in tune very well, I change my strings. I make sure that my environment is relatively quiet. I don't do a lot of professional recording right now. I do a lot of demo type recordings for the YouTube channel and that kind of thing and for my own enjoyment. Anyway, I don't spend a lot of money on it right now. Uh, I mean, you know, like tens of thousands of dollars. But you do have to spend something to get a decent recorder. Um, so that's just the bottom line. And also mics are important. What kind of mic you use. So you can do some uh, research on that about different kinds of mics. Of course, you can ask me questions. Um, I have patrons over at Patreon that connect with me very closely. I post things over there quite often. And, of course, you can make comments here, but uh, I answer questions over at Patreon a lot faster because they contribute financially to what we're doing here. Okay, thank you very much. We'll talk to you later. Happy recording. I hope that you uh, really get to be a good guitar player or piano player or whatever it is that you're doing because it is so rewarding. But you know what? It's also, it takes a lot of work. People telling you, you know, you can be a great guitar player in, in 10 easy lessons. Well, you can learn some tricks in 10 easy lessons, but to be able to have the confidence and to be able to have the, the muscle control and the memory for all of that kind of thing, it takes takes a lot of time. All right, we'll talk about that later too, if you're interested. Like how much time does it take to be a really good guitar player? I think I've answered that question before, but we can do it again.